During my research on the Quran, I was alarmed by a particular verse. In Surat Ibrahim 14.3, Those who love the life of this world more than the hereafter, who hinder men from the path of Allah, and seek therein something crooked. This statement seems to go against all conventional logic and human instinct. The whole purpose of our creation is to live and try to have as long a productive and happy life as possible. Will you explain this? Muhammadan Islam is the only belief system in the whole of the world's recorded history that advocates and glorifies death over life. Muhammad's message in his Quran of preferring death, invariably the death of others, not his, is the exact opposite of the Judeo-Christian traditions that insist upon the sanctity and preciousness and enjoyment of life. Muhammad's Quran prohibits its followers from all forms of enjoyment and pleasures on earth, but promises them unlimited and eternal sexual, sensual, and carnal pleasures in the hereafter, the same and more that are denied them in life. So much so, that the male followers of Muhammad would rather die and get killed in jihad, unholy war against all unbelievers, than be amongst the living so that they can gain these totally imaginary rewards. Al-Baqarah 2.94 Say, if the last homo is Allah be for you specially, and not for anyone else, then seek ye for death if ye are sincere. 2.95 But they will never seek for death. Thou wilt indeed find them, of all people, most greedy of life, even more than the idolaters. These verses are actually in reference to the Jews and Christians who would rather live a good life on earth than the utterly impossible and untrue promises of a better life in Muhammad's version of paradise that he incessantly regaled his superstitious, gullible, and ignorant followers with. Al-Imran 3.185 Every soul shall have a taste of death, for the life of this world is but goods and chattels of deception. Those of our listeners who have come to understand Muhammad's Quran by now should appreciate this verse, since this world is not the one which is deceptive, but it is Muhammad who was, as we have so far shown, whose mendacity and hypocrisy knew no bounds. Ibrahim 14.3 those who love the life of this world more than the hereafter. Al-Nahl 16.107 This because they love the life of this world better than the hereafter. Al-Ahzab 33.16 Say, running away will not profit you if you are running away from death or slaughter. Al-Jumu'ah 62.6 Say, O ye that stand on Judaism, al hadu, if you think that ye are friends of, to Allah, to the exclusion of other men, then express your desire for death if you are truthful. Why would any sane human being subscribe to a cult belief system whose God would rather have the ones he created be dead than alive? How could striving to be dead is an indication of a loving God? Only in the mentally and spiritually depraved culture of Muhammad and Islam is this possible, logical and hoped for. Al-Qiyamah 75.20 Nay, ye men, but ye love the fleeting life and leave alone the hereafter. Al-Insan 76.27 As to these, they love the fleeting life and put away behind them a day that will be hard. Sahih al-Bukhari 4.54 Narrated by Abu Huraira The Prophet said, By him in whose hands my life is, were it not for some men amongst the believers who dislike to be left behind me, and whom I cannot provide with means of conveyance, I would certainly never remain behind any Sariya, army unit, setting out in Allah's cause. By him in whose hands my life is, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause, and then get resurrected, and then get martyred, and then get resurrected again, and then get martyred, and then get resurrected again, and then get martyred again. Muhammad with his own words admits that he did not fight in the rage that he either initiated or conducted. What a coward! What an incredible liar! What an evil genius! Muhammad knowingly, skillfully and willfully deceived and manipulated his trusting, gullible and superstitious followers by enticing them with the most diabolical win-win promises. He was thus sending many of them to certain death with visions of booty and rape if they survived, 
and unlimited sensual and sexual pleasures in his version of paradise when they get killed in pursuit of his agenda. Al-Bukhari Hadith 5.425 narrated by Anas. Allah's Apostle went out towards the Khandaq, i.e. the trench, and saw the emigrants and the Ansar digging the trench in the cold morning. They had no slaves to do that work for them. When the Prophet saw their hardship and hunger, he said, O oh Allah, the real life is the life of the hereafter. So please forgive the Ansar and the emigrants. They said in reply to him, We are those who have given the pledge of allegiance to Muhammad to observe jihad as long as we live. Sahih Muslim Hadith 4963, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. Allah's Messenger said, Every intoxicant is khamr, wine. Every intoxicant is forbidden. He who drinks wine in this world and dies while he is addicted to it, not having repented, will not be given a drink in the hereafter. Muhammad, who forbade the drinking of wine to his followers because they were arriving intoxicated to the mosque, promises them exactly the same wine to drink for eternity in their afterlife. Muhammadan Islam is about eternal warfare against all those who do not believe in the depravities that they believe, and hence to subjugate, enslave, rape and plunder their wealth and produce that he and his followers were not willing or able to achieve through honest hard work. It should not then be a great surprise that the modern male followers of Muhammad who believe these lies would rather blow themselves up slaughtering defenseless civilians so as to attain the rewards of unlimited sexual and sensual pleasures with the promised 72 virgins. Muhammadan Islam is the ultimate cult belief system of joyless life but joyful and glorified death for its male followers, but a mournful and subservient life followed by a joyless afterlife for its female followers.